Residents of Fort Island on the Essequibo River are calling for more development on the historic former Dutch settlement. Leon Susteran reports. Residents of Fort Island, located up the Essequibo River, are calling for more security on the island as well as a new stelling. Channel 8 News recently visited the former Dutch settlement and spoke with a few residents. Fort Island is home to Fort Zealandia and the Court of Policy Building, both of which were declared national monuments by the Guyana government in 1999 and are now maintained by the National Trust of Guyana. The island, with a population of just under 50, has a health center, school, as well as an old Dutch museum. Life is not so good, you know, we do it with fishing in and farming. Mm -hmm. But we, don't, we, we want this telling to repair because this telling is the main source that we live in on this island. Okay. How oh, was the model facilities? You have the other facilities? Oh, we have a health center here. Hmm. But we need, a, we need some neighborhood police and so on the island because they call one of petty crime and one of petty things that happen, like the thief and one of the things that happen. Mm. Well, not really rampant, but one or two times. And then we, we is a tourist island too. Mm. A lot of tourists come here, among the tourists come here today. Yeah. And it's every, every day tourists are coming. Every day. Every so you day. feel that something should be given back to the island? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that. That, I understand. And we yeah. want the stelling to look after. Mm -hmm. We want the government to come in and look into the stelling. Mm -hmm. And we want a road run around this island that the tourists can get more facility to walk around the island. Mm -hmm. It's because this only this is only the river the, the river the river side road they call this here. This is not really road, this is a the track we got here. So I don't know what the government could do for we. It's because and since the previous government gone before, we get a little no this this one we barely getting a little thing though. So. We ain't really getting nothing for up up keep the living on this island. That resident has been residing for over twenty five years on Fort Island. The stelling, he noted, is an important entry and exit point to and from the island, and the authorities should recognize that. And that stelling there is the main source of living. Because if you have anything, create any stelling, you sell it, and you get the money from it. People start to migrate from here, people start to go away, every day people going away. Because children are getting good education, and the schooling, that is the main thing. So when they reach the age, they got to go away. Um, how many tourists come per day here, on average? Um, mm. yeah, yeah, for this, for this for last week, yeah, week, we have over a thousand. Wow. Mm. And every day we get tourists for this holiday. Mm. So we want things in place that if they could look after this telling, mm. if we can get a road around, around the island, it would be good to eat. Mm. Because the tourists only get, and there's only here, there's this part here and that part there. Mm. We have more other places that the tourists can come visit on the same island. Robbie Mahadio Prasad's house is located along the concrete walkway that connects the Court of Policy Building and Fort Zealandia. He struggles as a farmer to take care of his five children, but certainly dreams of a better life for his family. Born on Fort Island, Prasad moved with his parents to another island. At age 25, he returned to live with his wife, Rajde Kirlpati. Two of his sons, Akash 13 and Alvin 15, live with him as well as his daughter, Asha 7. Another daughter, Ashley, attends the Kuru Kuru College, while his son, Anan, works in the interior. He is quite concerned about poor security on the island. I was born in 50 years here now. I live around Guyana, so one so time and now I come and be a dung, but, 20, but, but 25 or over here, I'm married. I come and be a dung on this fourth island here. Mm -hmm. And we're doing self employ here. We're catching fish, we're doing agriculture, like me, but not about it. Some of them work with government and tourist resort and so How do you find life here? Life easy for me here because I got self employed but me you know for the rest. Well we never got no properly law enforcement in the place here though. We mm -hmm. suffering bad that we ain't got no properly lines for people doing what they need for the here, like a city mm -hmm. cowboy place like right? mm -hmm. people ain't doing what the law telling you for the or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So um that is one thing I'm find with here. He needs properly law enforcement. Um, discipline them, like, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of wrong things. Like what? Well, you want to mention a few? Like, like prostitute and like certain different oh, type of thing doing here with young you got people and, and so? yeah? bandits and so. Or well, no? we not getting no bandit because we get soldier come. But bandit used to run here for force, yeah. Mm -hmm. But since the soldier come, we not getting no bandit. Residents make use of solar power from government-provided solar panels and access rainwater from black tanks, which were also distributed by the government. We um. Well, Fee said they're going to put a light on the street here for mm -hmm. night. 
that for toys could come night and day. Mm -hmm. Garden day, but um, we been get solar, right? Couple of we get solar, and it's just that we not got no water here, mm -hmm. right? Well, if them give people black tank, right? People here now when you give them black tank there, right? Me and you, something me and all bad not go out for green, we can't get no water just mm -hmm. like that. We got to get the own rain water or go and buy water. So we suffering from the water system too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you live in black water here, but sometimes the water does white and then people just throw a lot of things in the water so it's not a healthy water so we mm -hmm. just got to forget healthy thing like so we suffering like them two things now we get we get solar and plus we will we buy we generator Persaud called on the relevant authorities to investigate sexual crimes involving underage girls on fort island whom he claimed are regularly exploited we don't know how if we could this thing here we got forgot to the um, human rights and mm -hmm. people got to come and vote and know because if one body talk or on the age right. girls being targeted and so on? Or? Yeah, well, um, mm. like, on the age girl, 16 years and so mm. girl, like, right? See, some of these, some of these people are going out to the teenagers of them by mm. night, so, like, Because up to the other day, there's a headline for us men go to the teenager, drive out to the government boat and go out to the one and carrying a, mm. a, 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 a ill one to a sickly one. Because she never got so much, she mad. There's one of my daughter there in the hall when she get mad. Like, she mad, she take, get away the boy and get mad. And the buying looking she and soon she cared back she said from doctor she going away the buying by doing she How old is she? She was about six seventeen or oh, she's years very ago. young. Yeah. The relevant authorities, including the Ministry of Social Protection, are therefore urged to investigate these claims and ensure that the perpetrators are brought to justice immediately. Residents depend heavily on farming on Fort Island when they would take their produce to be sold at Perica on the east bank of Essequibo. While many families have abandoned life on this remote island, others like Persaud prefer to remain and build their lives in Guyana's hinterland, where in as much there can be pain, suffering and hardships, there can also be contentment, simplicity and lots and lots of peace and quiet. For Channel 8 News, I am Leon Suseran.